Newt Gingrich is going to say something beyond ridiculous here about poverty. And, and let me ask you, uh, Mr. Gingrich, Speaker, um, when, when, you, when you look at that issue of inequality, and this is something he's put front and center, the Pope has, it's something, of course, that President Obama talks a lot about. We saw the story about homelessness sure. in New York, stark reality of, of, of the gap in, in, in the nation's biggest city. Is this an issue that Republicans should be talking about? Absolutely. I mean, how, how can you justify the level of wealth in those big towers in New York City? Right. and the level of poverty in those alleys. Absolutely. And without talking about government, say, surely a society that cared, that believed every person was endowed by their creator with the right to pursue happiness, would come up with a better solution than 22,000 children that are homeless. And, and I, think, I think that the Republican Party has an obligation to rethink some of its indifference to the very poor. And I think the Democrats have an obligation to ask themselves, after 50 years of the war on poverty, isn't it clear the government is not a very good... Well, except for the... Wait a minute. Hold on. Public policy actually does make a difference. Mr. Secretary. Uh, the, the war on poverty, <laughs> which next year we are going to celebrate 50, the 50th anniversary, uh, in addition to the Civil Rights Act, the war on poverty was successful for a time. What has happened, however, over the last 30 years, is that much of the uh, much of the ardor, much of the concern, uh, much of the, uh, the what propelled that war in, uh, on, a, on on poverty uh, has dissipated? Well, uh, it's, also true. Why, it's also why, true. Why, after five though, years that... of President Barack Obama, we see the the issue, the problem worse. Well, the problem is worse. I think it has something to do, perhaps, with the intransigence of the Speaker's party. Uh, because every time there was a jobs bill, every time there was an effort to expand a low-income housing, every time there was an effort to provide better opportunities for young people. We're talking about equal opportunity. Equal opportunity is at the basis of, at the basis of this. this. What is baloney? Here's the baloney. Every major city which is a center of poverty is run by Democrats. Every major city. Yes. Their policies have failed. You're not willing to admit it, and the fact is it's the poor who wait, suffer from but, but wait, wait, wait. That may be the dumbest thing Newt Gingrich has ever said. Every major city that has inequality and poverty is run by Democrats. Okay, so let's look at this as objectively as possible. Let's just give some pure facts. First of all, the United States is the most right-wing, a.k.a. Republican, of all the modern industrial nations. We also have the most inequality. That's not a coincidence. That's fact number one. Number two, the industrial, industrial, excuse me, revolution was the most right-wing, AKA Republican, time in American history, okay? And we had record income inequality then. Right? People living in tenement houses, pe people getting black lung, dying at the age of 52 from being overworked, uh, you know, little children uh, working machines, losing arms in factories. You had the Gilded Age, you had the Robber Baron Age. That's fact number two. Number three, the five poorest states in America, states, states, okay? Idaho, Kentucky, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Mississippi. All of them, all of them, Republican states. Now, to Newt Gingrich's point directly, they're all run by Democrats. Well, that's simply not true, as I just showed you. In fact, the Republican states have the higher levels of poverty. But also, their typical go-to example, Detroit. Detroit's been run by Democrats. Uh, Detroit is bankrupt. Detroit is in the worst uh, condition of any state uh, in the United States. The reason why Detroit is like that is because we got rid of protectionist policies when it comes to our trade and instituted what's called free trade, which in reality is just outsourcing. All of those great middle class factory jobs that were in Detroit that made the city of Detroit fantastic, all of those jobs got shipped to fucking Mexico and got shipped all over the world to second world and third world countries. Why? Because you can pay some little Bangladeshi boy 14 cents when a unionized worker in the U.S. you had to pay $32.50, okay? So the problem was that corrupt politicians did what the capitalists and the head of the car companies wanted them to do, and they didn't do what was right by the workers. And by the way, what kind of policies are those? What kind of policy is outsourcing? 
a conservative Republican policy. So that's the reason why Detroit is in bad shape, not because of the Democrats who were in power afterwards. The writing was on the wall after you outsourced all those great middle class jobs. But I'm not even done yet. Who receives the most taxpayer funding of the states, okay? Quote, 86% of red states, red states in 2010, received more federal spending than they paid in taxes. So 86% of the red states in the U.S. are what Newt Gingrich or any of the other conservatives, John Boehner, Mitt Romney, what they would call parasites. 86% of the red states are moochers or parasites. They get more than they pay. Meanwhile, the blue states, it's only 55%. How you like them apples? And finally, uh, last point I'll make here, who has the lowest income inequality and uh, highest income per capita and the best health care and the highest standard of living? And they even, what area of the world, what place self-reports being the happiest as well? They just, uh, just wall to wall, fantastic in every category. It's the evil liberal slash socialist Scandinavian region. Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Greenland, Finland, et cetera, et cetera. Those places have the absolute best outcome, outcomes, I should say, of all the different places, and they're the most progressive. So chew on that, Newt Gingrich. And actually, I forgot, I got to make one more point here. When he says that the war on poverty didn't work, uh, that's incorrect. In fact, after we implemented uh, Medicare and Social Security over time, when you look at the poverty rate among senior citizens, and those uh, programs are specifically geared towards senior citizens. After we implemented them, the poverty rate went from 39% to 11%, an overwhelming success. And to answer the host's question, why has uh, poverty gotten worse under President Obama and why is the middle class still struggling under President Obama? The answer is simple. He's not a progressive. He's more of a conservative.